Hey developers, today I'm gonna to look at a side project that I'm doing and I'm gonna talk about the tech stack that I'm setting up. We're gonna look at some different cloud providers, some pluses and minuses, and discuss the overall idea of a new project I'm making. So stay tuned, let's begin. All right, the last few days I have been working on uh, some ideas for some new projects I can work for the channel and I actually ended up buying some .tech domains. You guys. If you guys are listening to this, I believe the flash sale is still happening on Monday. I'll have a link in the description if you guys want to check that out. You can get some really cheap .tech domains. But I have a, a few domains now. I was thinking about some side projects that I've been looking to work on. And one of them um, is going to require a few things. So I'd like to have a Node.js backend. So, so what I did is basically I created a Trello board of some of the things that I'm looking for. You can see here. Um, so I'm looking for maybe a Node.js, either a Node.js backend, a Java Spring Boot, maybe microservices, uh, maybe I'll use serverless. I'm thinking about using GraphQL. So I'm kind of in between all those of what I want to use on the backend. I'm also looking to connect to a database. So I'm thinking a SQL type database, uh, Postgres. I'm not really looking to use any NoSQL stuff right now. I need a place to to store my images for this project. And uh, I'm pretty sure on the front end, I'm gonna stick with Vue or Nux.js. So definitely on the Vue side. And if I choose Vue and just do static files, then I you know there's a lot of different options. If I wanna use Nux.js and have it kind of in, be in the universal application, it actually runs a little bit of a node server on the front end. So I'll definitely need to have like a node server um, place I can deploy that to as well. So that, those are the kind of requirements for this side project. I'm not entirely sure what it will be. I have a couple of ideas, but I know this is sort of what I want. Now on the back end, it's kind of, it's it's all over the place because I really want to learn GraphQL. I haven't done it. I think that'd be a, a really cool skill to, to work with and I want to run Apollo and things like that. Uh, serverless, uh, I might I might use serverless. So in that case, I know I have a lot of options. I can use Node, I can use Java, I can use Python. Um, there's a lot of serverless stuff I want to use. So that might be in conjunction of one of these these uh, languages in the back end. Java Spring Boot, I've used that a lot of my work, and and I'd like to. I'm pretty pretty good at it, so I'd like to maybe jump into a project of my own using Java Spring Boot, and then of course Node. Especially if I use Nux, I might use Nux with Express, and then I can do a little bit of, of stuff with that. So, and then I, I might even just scrap using Java Spring Boot and just write everything in Node. I haven't wrote, written an Express app in a while, but it sounds interesting. I'm also thinking about maybe using an ORM too. There's a few ORMs that I might use with Node. So I have a lot of choices here, um, things that I wanna do. So I was looking at some cloud providers. I mean, usually the three that everybody talks about is AWS, Azure, and Google, um, Google Cloud Platform. So first with AWS, there's a, a few things I can do, and this is where I'm in uh, in between here. And I love to hear any comments from you guys below if you have any suggestions. So with the Amazon services, I'm looking something to do Express or Java. Um, I have a lot of, of, of things I can do here. So for example, LightSail looks really interesting to me. Uh, it's really cheap, 350 USD. It's basically like these little VPSs almost. Um, simple cloud platform, they're calling it. So you can jumpstart your project in AWS. You've got compute storage and networking. Um, so you can even, even mentions it here when you jump into the features that you can run an Ubuntu server. You can, there's, let's see here. Oh, that's the conference that's coming up. But if you click uh, some of the features here, so like it's like basically a virtual private server that you get. You get experience, power, reliability, AWS, has a powerful API, some storage, some speed, uh, and you can have like an Ubuntu server. I don't really love the idea of having to set up a whole server, but it says it has pre-configured images allow you to launch your favorite Linux distros, but it's, it's pretty... Uh, it's pretty cheap and it might be something that's perfect for, for what I'm trying to do. I mean, I've never used it, but it could work. Another product solution that I could do, especially if I'm using, uh, if I'm using uh, Spring Boot, I could use Elastic Beanstalk. I can use EC2. I could just, you know, spin up a whole instance and just configure everything myself. 
Although at that point, I might just use light sail. I don't know. Or I could use a serverless function and then just use Java. The The problem I heard with serverless with Java is that there's some spin up time. So I'd have to probably have some scheduler to keep the serverless function, uh, the Lambda function going more often. But that could be something I want to do. And if I'm just doing a fun little project and I don't have tons of traffic at first, you know, I think any of those would work. I think this might be a little bit more expensive. It was hard to determine if I look at the pricing. I don't have the free tier. So, I mean, kind of looking at the different calculators they have, I'd have to kind of justify all this. I'm assuming I'm probably end up spending like 10, 15 bucks a month after I have everything set up. You know, I'd use Amazon Route 53. And, uh, you know, if I decide to use just a view, uh, I can just create static files. I can dump it into an S3 bucket. That would be pretty easy. I can use RDS as my Postgres. And then, um, you know, do my domains through Route 53, um, use CloudFront for my SSL and, and, and everything I would need to do there. So this would have everything I need. I think this might be a little bit more expensive, but it, and a little more complicated, but I definitely could do it. Uh, another thing I could do is just for hosting itself, I can definitely use Net Netlify because it has that continuous deployment. I can point my, my records, my A records, whatever I need to, to Nellify for my domains. So I think that would be useful, but I don't, this would be just like one part of it. Uh, another idea would be maybe using Firebase. So I could, it does have a Firestore. So if I decided to, and a real-time database, so I can use either one of these to store my data instead of using something like Postgres. So it doesn't have that, but it would work. Uh, you know, tons of storage. I can have cloud functions too, which I think it only supports Express. I don't know if you can do Java on your cloud functions. Uh, it does have some hosting available as well. So this could be an option. I, once again, I don't know if I could get like a NUC server up on Firebase easily. Uh, it might be great if I decided to go with Vue. And then once again, I'd just be locked into Firebase a platform and it has authentication and everything that would be cool. Uh, I, one other thing is I could just grab a VPS hosting provider, um, you know, DigitalOcean, you know, I could spend like five, 10 bucks a month. One thing I don't love about this is that I think if I needed to scale higher, I'd have to turn off the instance and turn it back on. So that's not my favorite thing. Uh, I like Bluehost. I used them before, but they're quite a bit more expensive. So I can get one gig of RAM for 30 gigs storage space. For thirteen seventy five, basically, it's half the price here with twenty five gigs. So, and then I would have to deal. I really don't want to do the DevOps of trying to get the whole server configured and worrying all about that. So that's not everything I wanted. It's not exactly perfect. Pivotable, pivotal. I think would be the same way. Uh, Azure. It has. They have app services. I could. I could definitely deploy my Java Spring Boot application too. I can even get uh, virtual machines. I mean, this has everything that it would have everything that the AWS had. I don't. I'm not as familiar with Azure Platform, so I think I would have a little bit more of a learning curve here. Um, and I think the prices are pretty comparable to Amazon, so I'm, I'm sure I'll end up spending like ten, fifteen dollars a month on on everything but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the one thing also I could do Heroku. Nice thing about Heroku is it has both Express. I could do Express servers. I can do Java Spring Boot. Um, it has a, a free tier for Postgres as well. So I could do the free tier here. Uh, it does have 30 minutes of inactivity, so I would have to try to figure out a way to, if I did the free tier, or I could just pay $7 a month. That's probably what I'd do. Um, but the free tier, if I wanted to start off with that, I'd have to figure out some way to like, Ping, uh, ping the server to get rid of the inactivity so I don't have 30 minutes of inactivity. And then I could do for the Postgres, which has built in, I can do the hobby one for zero to nine dollars a month. And then I could do this. So this would work and I would have the flexibility of if I decided to go with Express or maybe I have both, maybe I could even create two Heroku instances, maybe put one on free, one on hobby and it would scale and it does a lot of what I want and it does work pretty well with Java Spring Boot. So that would could be a good flexible way of doing it. Uh, 
I wouldn't be able to do like any microservices, things like that. I wouldn't be on the Amazon ecosystem, but it does have a lot to offer. And I'm sure I can get my domains and everything pointed to it. And then uh, you, like I saw this video, they even have a video of Spring Boot app to Azure right here. Uh, so I'm sure it's pretty interesting. So that's my choices. I'm kind of leaning towards either Heroku or AWS. Um, I do know Firebase pretty well, uh, but I do know AWS. Heroku I've used in the past, but I never used it with a Java Spring Boot app. I don't know. I, let me know what you guys think. Uh, what you guys think for my my project here? You can see here. I think I could do. I could even probably even do both if I wanted to. I could do something like Heroku for uh, the Java Spring Boot app in the back end. You know, use something like. Nellify for the front end app, or I can even kind of think of maybe a second, maybe use Amazon for part of it. I don't know. I could probably use a two or three, maybe even use something like uh, for my SSL certificate. I can try to think how I want to do that. For maybe a free SSL certificate provider out there. A lot of a lot of choices. So let me guys, let me know what you guys think. What what stacks do you guys use? Uh, I'd love to hear it. And if you guys like these type of videos, make sure you click that subscribe button and that like button. Thanks.